Hello people, this is Self Tuts and in this video we are going to learn about graph representation algorithm and we will be representing a directed graph using adjacency matrix. So there are two important terms in this particular problem statement that is what one is directed graph and another is adjacency matrix. So first we need to learn that what is a directed graph and what is an adjacency matrix and then we'll try to solve this question in Java. So if you see a directed graph then it looks like this that in a directed graph there are vertex and there are edges and one vertex is pointing to some other vertex in a particular direction so if i take this particular directed graph then the vertex are what one two three four five so one two three four five are the vertexes they can be in any order and anywhere it is not mandatory that two will be after one but there will be an edge between any of the two vertexes and the edge will point in a particular direction. In an undirected graph, the edges are not directed. They are, they are bidirectional, which means there is no direction in the edge. But in directed graph, the edge point to a particular vertex from starting from another vertex. So if I take one to four, then this edge is directing or this edge is pointed from one to four. If I take five, and 2 as the vertex then 2 is pointing to 5 so there is an edge or there is a directed edge from 2 to 5 same way from 3 to 4 so 3 is pointing towards 4 which means there is an edge between 3 and 4 which goes from 3 to 4 there is no edge between 3 and 4 which goes from 4 to 3 so you need to understand that in a directed graph the edges are directional which means it can go into only one direction which means one edge can point only into one direction and not in multiple directions. If you look into the edges of this particular directed graph, then there are edge from 1 to 4. So there is edge between 1 to 4 and 1 is pointing towards 4. So edge is between 1 to 4 and not from 4 to 1. 4 to 2. So there is an edge between or a directed edge between 4 to 2. Same way there is 2 to 5. So if you go 2 to 5, then 3 to 5 so there is edge between 3 to 5 which is pointing from 3 to 5 3 to 4 and there is an edge from 3 to 4 and 3 to 1 so there is an edge between 3 to 1 so if we take the count of edges then there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 edges and we have displayed or we have listed 6 edges here 1 2 3 4 5 6 now these are the edges which are present in this particular directed graph so i want to repeat again that in a directed graph the edge is pointing in a particular direction but if we take the case of undirected graph then the edges are not pointing if it is the case of undirected graph and these two nodes or these two vertex are connected which means 1 to 4 which means that there is an edge between 1 to 4 and there is an edge from 1 to 4 and then 4 to 1 in case of undirected graph but in directed graph there is a single edge here and that is from what 1 to 4 only so we have seen what is a directed graph and now we'll try to learn what is an adjacency matrix so suppose we need to display or we need to represent this graph so in our mind we can see that there is an edge between 1 to 4 or there is a edge between 4 to 2 because we can see it and our mind can interpret it but for the computer to understand this graph we need to represent this particular graph using a data structure and the easiest way or the most basic way to represent this particular graph or any graph using a data structure so that the computer can understand it is using an adjacency matrix. So what is an adjacency matrix? An adjacency matrix is a two dimensional array which represents this graph. So this data structure is used to represent a directed graph so that computer can understand it. Now in this particular directed graph we are having five nodes. So we are representing nodes starting from 1 that's why we have taken a two dimensional array whose size is greater than the number of nodes or number of vertex present in this graph. Since the number of nodes are 5 so we have taken a two dimensional array of size 6 upon 6 which means there are 6 rows and 6 columns we are, because we are starting the index from 1. When this adjacency matrix is created then all the places here in this in this two dimensional array is zero which means there is no edge in between these two vertex so we'll fill this adjacency matrix one by one after reading the edges here and we'll 
and will connect the different vertex. In this adjacency matrix, I again want to repeat that if the value is zero, then it means that there is no edge in between those two nodes or those two vertex. And if the, if the value is equal to one, then it means that there is an edge in between those two nodes. So we'll read this graph and we'll try to fill this particular adjacency matrix so that we can tell that which two nodes are connected, which two vertex are connected or which two vertex has a edge in between them. So the first edge is, is in between one to four. So we'll take the vertex here as one and then the another vertex as four and we need to make this particular value as one. So we'll update it with one. So now this there is an edge in between 1 to 4 and it is pointing from where 1 to 4. Now another edge is in between 4 to 2. So we'll update 4 to 2 and we will make this particular location as 1. So we'll update it by 1 here. Then again 2 to 5. So we'll update the matrix and this time it will be 2 to 5. And you can see that we have updated this 2 to 5 here and it is 1. Now 5 to 3. So 5 to 3 is which location? 5 to 3 this one. So we need to update this and we'll make this as 1. Now 5 to 3 has been done then 3 to 1. Okay so there is no edge between 5 to 3 it is from 3 to 5. So we need to update this one we have done it wrong here. So you need to take the direction it is from 3 to 5. So we need to update 3 to 5. So 3 to 5 will be what? This is 3 to 5 so it will be 1. Now 3 to 1. So we, we need to update 3 to 1 and we have successfully updated it. This one 3 to 1 and then again 3 to 4. So we need to update 3 to 4 this one. So 3 to 4 is this one. So I think we have marked all the edges. Now we'll see one time that this is 1. So there's an edge between 1 to 4. Okay. 1 to 4 is perfect. Then in this row there's an edge between 2 to 5. 2 to 5 it is perfect then from 3 to 1 okay so 3 to 1 is fine then 3 to 4 this one 3 to 4 so 3 to 4 there is an edge perfect and it is directed from 3 to 4 then 3 to 5 3 to 5 it is perfect then from 4 to 2 so if we take 4 and 4 to 2 so it is perfect so this is the adjacency matrix which now contains 0 and 1 values where 1 represents that there is an edge between those two nodes and the zero represents that there is no edge between these two nodes. Now we'll try to write a program in our Java language so that we can read the edges. That is the input will be given that there are five nodes and, the, and there's an edge between one to four, which is directed. So we'll create this kind of adjacency matrix. Once the adjacency matrix has been created, then we can work on this particular graph that if you want to find the shortest path, if you, if you want to do a depth first traversal, if you want to do a breadth first traversal, then you will need this particular representation so that you can work on this directed graph. So I'll, I'll switch to my Eclipse editor here and we'll try to do the coding. So I'm in my Eclipse editor and I have already created a self uh project here. And inside the self touch project, there is a self touch.java file. So here we will do the coding and it contains a main method, which is the entry point of our application. Now, the first thing is what we need to say that how many nodes or how many vertex are there so we need to take a input for that so what we'll do there are five vertex here so we'll come here and we'll say vertex is equal to how much five now as i have this as i've explained you before that since the vertex is five and we are representing the index of two dimensional array from one not from zero so we'll take the size of adjacency matrix one greater than the vertex. So the adjacency matrix can be represented by a two dimensional array and we'll just say matrix equal to new end and then again here new end and we'll make the size of this particular thing is equal to what vertex plus one and then vertex plus one. Okay, so this is the adjacency matrix. So when computer reads this line number nine, then it creates this particular representation in the memory, but all the places here are zero, but we need to fill those adjacency matrix places with one whenever there is an edge. So what we need to do, we need to capture the information of the edges. So I will create a class here that is edge, we will, which will denote that what is the start vertex and what is the end vertex of that edge. And then we'll capture all those edges and then we'll update the adjacency matrix. So we'll create a edge class which will contain two properties. The first property will be what integer start vertex and then another integer end vertex. 
okay so these are the two properties of this class and then we'll create a constructor here which will take so i'll write uh, public and then edge the name of the class and it will take what start vertex start and end so that there's no name confusion so end start and end and we'll say what this dot start vertex equal to start and then this dot end vertex equal to end so we have created a class which represents a edge data structure which means that we are storing edge in this particular class now we'll we'll capture the edges so what we need to do we'll create an array list so that we can store one or more number of edges so we'll say there's an array list which can store edge type of data and this is what edge list and this will be equal to what new array list and then edge so these are simple java syntaxes which you must understand before going to solve these kind of problems so there's an array list so we need to import the java util class so that array list can work once the array list has been created then we need to capture all the edges which will update the adjacency matrix so we'll say edge list dot add and in add what we'll do we'll store a new edge so we'll say new edge and we'll give the information what the edge is between one to four so the start vertex is one and the end vertex is four same way what we'll do we'll say that there is a edge between four to two so we'll say four to two four to two so i'll update all these edges or i'll add those edges and we'll again come here i have listed down all the edges here and we can again verify it that there is an edge between one to four so there is an edge between one to four then four to two so it is four to two then two to five so two to five then from three to five three to one and three to four three to five three to one and three to four so we have just stored the edges information in this array list which which has the name edge list now what we'll do we will update the so i'll make the screen up here and now what we want to do we want to update this matrix with this these values so for that what we need to do we need to get each edge value so for that i'll do a for loop and i'll loop over this edge list so for int i equal to 0 int i equal to 0 i less than edge list dot size edge list dot size i plus plus and then what i need to do i need to store each edge value in a variable so i'll say edge and then current edge equal to what array list is what edge list so i'll access the edge from this array list and i'll take the value of i so when this loop will run so every time i'll get a new edge that we have stored so first time we'll get one to four then four to two so i'll take the start vertex so it will be start vertex equal to what current edge dot start vertex and then i'll take what int end vertex equal to what current edge dot end vertex so we have taken the two values that is start edge start vertex and end vertex and now what we need to do we need to update the matrix so that all the places where there is an edge that can become one so we'll say matrix and then what start vertex and then end vertex equal to one so we are saying that please mark all those locations where there is a vertex so it is from one to four so it will be marked as one from this statement line number 35 and then what we'll do we'll try to print it so the printing of a two-dimensional array is simple you must have read about it so i'll just copy this so that i can take the first for loop and then i'll delete these lines and the size or the number of loop will be equal to how much the number of vertex because there are five elements so first what we need to do we need to access all the rows so there are five rows only and then five columns so what i will do i will again copy it and this time i will make it for j so for j equal to zero j less than vertex and j plus plus so i will print each row so system dot out dot print ln and inside not print ln because we need to print it in the same line so i'll say i need to print this one first then this one then this one so i'll say matrix and the value will be equal to what i comma j 
so first in the first loop i will be equal to 0 and j will vary from 0 to uh, 5 so as we have taken the value from 1 so we need to update here 1 it will not be from 0 because the rows and columns are starting from 1 so again it will be equal to less than equal to 5 because we need to go up to the end vertex okay so 1 to 5 so the vertex value is 5 so the vertex is from where 1 to 5 so we need to traverse from 1 to 5 so it is less than equal to and not less than otherwise it would have been 4 and we have missed the last vertex so i have printed it and then i'll give a space here so that it is clearly visible now when we print each row that is we have print we have printed each row then we come want to come to the next line so after each row has been printed then we will do what we'll just put system dot out dot print ln so we'll just put a empty print ln statement so that we can come to the next line now i'll try to run this program and let's hope everything runs fine so this is the representation two dimensional array representation and now we'll match with the thing that we have calculated so the first row says what triple zero one zero so triple zero one zero perfect second one four zero and then one four zero and then one it is also fine then one double zero one 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 double zero one one fine zero one triple zero zero one triple zero perfect and the last row contains every column as zero and the last row contains every column as zero so i think this program is working fine so what we did in this program we created an adjacency matrix then we stored the information that which edges are present then we accessed each edge and we updated the adjacency matrix now this is the basic uh, step that you need to do in any graph uh, related question because we need to represent a graph using some data structure so that we can work on it so once it ha it has been represented through this two dimensional array then we can do a breadth first traversal then when then we can do a uh, depth first traversal then we can find the shortest path or anything whatever you want to do so this was all about how to represent a directed graph the important thing is what in a directed graph there is a direction to the edge so the edge can point only in one direction but in an undirected graph a edge points in bi-directional way it is not the case that there can be only one edge between one and four you need to create another edge if there is an edge between four to one in undirected graph one edge is uh, already enough to represent a bi-directional view but if in a directed graph there is a uh, edge between means you want to represent that one is pointing to four and again four is pointing to one then you need to create two edges okay so this was all about how to represent a directed graph using adjacency matrix. So hope you like this video. Hope you like my channel. Please subscribe to my video and please share these videos with other people. Thank you.